Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A plus certification training course. I'm James Messer, and this module is all about upgrading Windows. This is from our CompTIA A plus 220-701 section 3.3. And we've already gone through installing Vista, installing Windows XP, installing Windows 2000. Now we need to be able to upgrade the Windows operating system. And one of the pieces of that is not just the upgrade itself, but there's also something called the user state migration tool. We're going to learn about what that is in this episode and how it can help you migrate someone from an older operating system to a new one. Before we do an actual upgrade, let's look at the process you would go through. What is the path that you can take to go from one operating system to another? Now, if you remember, if we want to do a clean install, it really doesn't matter what operating system you're running right now. You simply will overwrite what's already there. But in many cases, a end user might have a lot of applications already running on his machine. There are certainly user documents, spreadsheets, word processing documents and all kinds of different things they may have used, uh, text documents on their hard drive. They don't want to remove those. They don't want to delete them. They don't want to completely erase everything there and start new. They want to just take their current operating system, upgrade to a new operating system, and leave everything in place. Use the same hardware. Use the same software. They don't want to have to, want to, have to reload any new programs. They want to just use everything the way it was, except now you're in a brand new operating system. Well, you can't do that just for any operating system. For instance, these are the upgrade paths. If you are going from uh, to Windows 2000 or Windows XP, you can see there are places if you wanted to go from Windows 95 to Windows 2000, you just need to upgrade. Just slide in the Windows 2000 CD, and you can click Upgrade from there. If you want to go from Windows 95 to Windows XP, however, notice that you have to do an install. So it's important that you, in your mind, keep track of all of the different options available to you. You are, you are expected to know that for the CompTIA exam. Notice if you want to go to Windows 2000, you can pretty much do that from Windows 95, 98, and Windows NT. You cannot do that from Windows Millennium. For Windows XP, you can upgrade from 98 ME and NT, but you cannot upgrade from Windows 95. So in a way, this makes it very easy, even though there's a lot of different pieces on the screen. If you just remember almost uh, what you can't upgrade to, it's a lot easier than trying to remember what you can upgrade to. Windows Vista is a little bit different. Windows Vista has many different flavors, and there are many different operating systems that preceded it. So this one is a bit of an eye chart, and you may have to spend some time. Fortunately, there are some things that are universal here. So a lot that's on the screen we can already get rid of or take out of our mind. For instance, Windows 2000, if you wanted to go to anything Vista, well, that's too bad. You can't upgrade. You must install. So already we can take Windows 2000 right off the table. Also, Windows XP Professional, the 64-bit version, there is no upgrade path to any of these Vista versions. So you must install completely from a fresh install for those. Now, Windows XP Home knows you can upgrade to anything. XP Professional. I can upgrade to Vista Business and Vista Ultimate. And Media Center, only Vista Home Premium and Vista Ultimate. And in many ways, this makes sense. We know that XP Home is sort of the entry level Windows XP. So it makes sense that I'd be able to upgrade to anything Windows Vista. Now, Windows XP Professional was not the Windows XP Home. So it also makes sense that I would not be able to upgrade to the home versions. I would only be able to upgrade to at least the business version and the ultimate version, which is really what the more professional versions of Vista are. Media Center is just a, an animal in its own right. And of course, there are differences of that, how it works. It's not a home version. It's not a professional version. It's one really designed for media. So the only one you can upgrade to, Vista Home Premium, because the home version is where really Media Center really belongs. And Vista Ultimate just supports almost everything. So it also makes sense that you'd be able to upgrade to that version as well. When we were doing a clean install of the operating system, there were a number of things we didn't even have to worry about. We just had to figure out, can our hardware support what we're about to do? And we install it. Off we go. There wasn't a lot of concern about worrying about compatibility between the two. But if you are doing an upgrade, it's a different kind of checklist to consider when you start going through this. First, there is an upgrade advisor for Windows XP and Windows Vista. So you can load that advisor up, and it checks your machine already. You're running Windows XP. It'll go through your XP drivers. It'll 
look at the software you're running on your computer. It'll examine what the hardware settings are for your computer, and it will tell you this computer will absolutely support Windows Vista. You may need to update this software version. You may need to change these drivers or have different drivers available. And it tells you all about that. It's a great tool to use if you're planning to do an upgrade. So obviously, hardware compatibility is a concern. Just because a piece of hardware works in Windows XP doesn't mean that there is a driver or that that piece of hardware is compatible with Windows Vista. So that's something to keep in mind when you are doing an upgrade. It's not just about the operating system. You have to make sure every piece of hardware you have is compatible with where you are going. Software is almost more of a concern because generally we have many more pieces of software from many different companies than we have pieces of hardware. So you want to make sure that the software you're running and the version that you're running is going to work in that new version. So this may take a lot more work. This may take going out to the manufacturer's websites for the software, the developer websites for that software, and checking, is the version I have compatible with the operating system that I'm upgrading to? You can just have a big checklist and start going through that checklist one after the other. You can start to see now that if you are in a large organization, that has hundreds and hundreds of applications that people run on their desktops, you can't just upgrade. You really have to go through a very methodical process to make sure that when you upgrade, that those people will still be operational and able to use their computers for day-to-day -day work. You're going to want to make sure that if you have anything that you just don't use anymore, applications that you don't use, programs that you don't take use of, if there's hardware in your computer you don't use anymore, you are much better off if you get rid of it. Just undelete it, get rid of any files, make as much room on your hard drive as possible. These upgrades are not simple things. Get rid of any applications you don't use because these applications, especially older ones, could create problems after you have upgraded your operating system, especially hardware where you've got older modems and older pieces of hardware that you never use anymore. There's no reason to have it in your computer. If anything, it will create problems for you. Hopefully it will not, but if it's out of your computer, it absolutely will not create any problems. This one is important, especially considering the type of security that we have on our computers these days. Get rid of your antivirus, disable it, have it, have it sitting standby. You may obviously want to also get rid of firewall, disable your firewall settings that are in there as well. What you're going to find is when you move from one operating system to another, your antivirus is not going to work in that new operating system anyway. Operating systems uh, and antivirus programs are very, very specific to operating system functionality. So you will almost always have to upgrade and at least upgrade your antivirus, and almost certainly your firewall if it's not one that's already built into the operating system. If there's other automated processes, downloads, and other things that kick off on your machine, you may want to disable those as well. You don't want those firing off in the middle of an upgrade. And lastly, always have a backup. You should put that at the first line and at the last line. Always, always, always back up your system. You want to be sure that if something really bad was to happen in the middle of this upgrade, and it has happened to me where I've gone through an upgrade and right in the middle, something dramatic happened. We lost power. Something failed on the computer. The upgrade program itself had a fault. And when that happens, your system could be left in a state that is unusable. In many cases, it is recoverable. In many cases, it is not recoverable. So you should always have a complete backup. If you want to be really safe, just image the whole machine. If you do the upgrade and something really went wrong, in just a few minutes, you can re-image back to the way that it was. So having a backup is extremely important. At a very bare minimum, make sure you have the user's data. Make sure you have their spreadsheets and their word processing documents and anything else they use. That way, if you had to do a clean install, you could at least reinstall all the apps, reinstall and re-upload all of those files, and they'd at least be sorted back to where they were to begin with.